I'm Tom Hattrick. Today at McCurney Oz, we're going to show you how to change a needle and seat and also in some carburetors how to avoid the risk of breaking a float post. There's four main causes of needle and seat failure in a carburetor. And the one thing you do need to know is carburetors don't adjust themselves. So if you've got fuel coming out the overflow, it doesn't mean get in, take the bowl off and start bending your tag because that's how you're going to stop it. There is a cause for what's happening and then you've just got to determine which one it is and then take the appropriate action. Now when a carb, you do start flooding, uh, on the bottom here on the drain on your bowl, you've got a little capillary tube inside where when fuel comes up above the top of the level on that, it will start to run out of here. The hole is fairly small in here because you do get a bit of splash in the bowl, so it tries to cut back on the amount of that that will come out of here. But it's not unusual to see this pipe looking a little bit uh, damp, you know, because, just simply because of that. But if you've got a major failure, which means the level is up above here, then it'll start to run out of here. Now, obviously, if it gets worse than that, on the side of the carburetor, you've got this pipe here, which goes directly down into the top of the bowl for equalising the chamber pressure, but it's also there for a major evacuation if you've got a, um, a major bypass going on and the fuel will run out there. Or same thing, if the bike tips over on its side, uh, it'll also evacuate the fuel out of there via this pipe, trying rather than um, coming in through the needle jet here and flooding the motor itself. So, um, yeah, so we'll go and have a quick look at the main four causes that can be causing the problem you've got. One of them, of course, is just simply age. It could just be a you know, 20 year old needle and seat and the car is due for a full once over and, um, and it just needs replacing. But uh, the uh, other more common ones are um, where someone's left fuel in a carburetor for an extended amount of time, which can cause a bit of a lacquer build up in there. Same thing with an, on your jets and just from the fuel solidifying and uh, even get a little bit of corrosion in there and then the needle and seat definitely needs to be replaced with that. Um, the next one is foreign objects where you'll get little particles catching in the needle and seat as the fuel's passing through or even getting stuck on their old tank liner or something like that. Generally stuff coming from the tank. But you're good, you'll get an indication that this is usually the problem when you remove the uh, bowl or the drain bung and then in there you'll see particles, you know, in the bottom of the bowl. Always when you remove the bowl and to empty it out, empty it into a nice clean white ice cream container or something. So you can see if there is anything there that's not meant to be and that'll be a good indication. And it generally means you need to install a better inline fuel filter. Uh, and the final thing that uh, causes problems in here, which we do find from time to time, can be tank pressurising, which means that your fuel cap isn't ventilating properly. Uh, it's quite common with people go out and buy a new, uh, um, you know, dodgy aftermarket fuel cap or something like that, and there's a few of them around that don't vent properly. And then next thing you've got a pressure build up in the tank. Uh, the needle and seat in here will pop off at about two and a half psi. So the one way to determine if that is what your issue is is to uh, wheel your bike out into the yard in the sun with a cap unscrewed, so there's no total pressure relief there. Uh, turn on the petcock, let the bike sit there for 15 minutes or so if nothing's happening and uh, you know, you're quite happy that, oh, well, okay, it's not doing anything, then screw the cap down and then in very, you know, not a short amount of time, especially on a hot sunny day, you'll find that the pressure will build up and if, it, if that is the issue, it'll pop off and start leaking out the overflow here. So uh, that's a good way to determine what's going on with that one. Apart from that, um, yeah, we're just going to go and I'll just show you... Um, the three types of uh, arrangement we have for accessing the needle and seat in the carbies we sell here. Uh, and just more, more so, especially the third one where you need to be very cautious of how you remove the uh, float pin so as not to damage the float post. So what I'm gonna show you now is some of the different systems that McCurney has in the carbies we sell here and you may open yours and could be a little bit different again, but this is most probably the sim simplest one for removal. And basically, the, the, uh, in this TMX carb, the seat just sits in there, just held in there by an O-ring, and the bowl is all that actually holds it in place. There's no other screws required. Remove the bowl and remove these little uh, stops here. They just come off the end of the rods to take off the floats and take it off, replace it. This is the next easiest one. 
Uh, this is a TM42 or HSR42. See with this one here, the Phillips head screw holds the pin and float in position. And you'll also notice on the uh, seat needle that it's got a wire clip which slides over the tag. That's just simply there for uh, ease of assembly. If you're trying to find yourself a replacement needle and seat in our site that for a carburetor that we don't sell and maybe uh, you'll see one there but it doesn't have that clip on it but everything else is suitable, it's not uh, essential that that clip be there. They just read there just basically for ease of assembly. So anyway, that just you just undo that, that removes straight out. Then you've got a second screw here, which is actually holding the seat itself in place. So we just undo him and uh, there we go. And then we just grab the seat carefully with a pair of long nose pliers, give it a wriggle and out she comes. And this one is uh, set in place with an O-ring. Here we have our final type of uh, arrangement where this is the one where the most care needs to be taken to access the needle and seat. This is one of the factory's VM round slide carbs. This also applies to our TM flat slide non-pump carb and also the TM pumper carbs being the uh, TM40 and 36 or the RS bank of four. Now what these have is uh, with these carbs, we've got a pin in here with a, like a nail head looking end on this end and then just uh, in other end of the pin on the other side for knocking it out. But to um, stop the pin floating, because it's not held in place by a screw or anything else like that, it's not a floating pin, there actually, actually is a taper on the inside of the, tin, of the pin here, it's enlarged. So when it's knocked into this post, that locks it in place and stops it from floating. Where caution must be taken is because some of these can be in there for quite a long time, up to 20 years plus. Uh, you'll find that with dissimilar metals, you can get some growth inside. And uh, if you don't support this post while trying to knock it out from this side, you run a high risk of snapping off the post itself, which then basically writes off the carb. Very expensive exercise if you do that on a bank of four where you can't buy a replacement body and the whole set of carbs is then written off. So what you would do to knock out the pin is just support this surface here on the edge of a vise have someone help you or carefully do it yourself. And then at the same time, while it's sitting on the vise, then just carefully tap out the pin so that then the arm comes off or uh, on some of the other production type carbs, you've got float, brass floats on there or whatever, but that just gets that out of the way and then you've got access to your needle and seat. Also worth a mention on with this particular carburetor here, uh, factory with these doesn't even release a uh, float height setting on their VM carbs, but when you look at it from this angle here, you can see if you look at a level plane across the bowl surface up to here, they actually set them, it's just set dead level and that's where they're set at it with the factory. On these also with our 30 through to 44 mil carbs, which come with a 0.5 of a millimetre fibre washer under the seat, you also have the opportunity rather than bending the tag, which is sort of changing the geometry of it and pushing more on the side onto the needle rather than still a direct up and down, uh, you can actually buy a 0.8 of a millimetre or a one millimetre fibre washer to replace this one here, which then would give you a, a higher float height, height, which may be needed if you've got some carburetors on a fairly downward facing angle. Um, so, but anyway, once you've uh, removed the pin, get the float or the uh, float arm out of the way, and then you just unscrew the needle and seat and that just uh, pull it out, replace it with a new one or clean it all out and then just put it back in place and just reverse your whole assembly. This is the next type of carburetor we're going to have a look at, which is our TM non-pump flat slide. Uh, has the same pin arrangement as the VM, but just a little bit more of a different process to actually access the needle and seat for removal. Okay, so as, as I've shown you, you still have a vise here and you can just rest that on there, slide it in, you'll feel it hit up against the edge of the nail head type edge. Just have someone else kind of hold on to the other side of it to keep it level, keep it steady. And then while it's just sitting there on there, I can get a punch on the end of it. Just tap it through, job done. Out she comes and it's all ready to go. And uh, as I explained before, when you have a look at them, um, can feel it on the on the vernier there it actually grows right on the edge so that's a part you need to be aware of okay so now that the uh, 
pin's been released, you can just slide the pin out, you remove your uh, arm, floats come off. This one here, we've also got to take out the uh, main jet, so as we can release this baffle here, and uh, then we've got a screw with a hold down plate holding the needle and seat in place. So I've got to undo this Phillips head screw. And that's it, plate comes off. So the plate there has got to come off as well. And then simply to remove the needle and seat, we just grab it with some long nose pliers and out she comes, job's done. Get your new needle and seat and then just reverse the process, put it all back together. Okay, and here we have the final uh, car we're going to have a look at today, which is our TM40, same carburetor as you'll find in our banks of 4RS carburetors. This one here, again, also has the uh, nail head type pin in it, which means it must be supported for removal of that pin. Uh, with this one here, once you've removed the pin, whole float assembly lifts out of the way. And then when you look down in here, there's just a Phillips head screw like on the 42, which is holding the seat in place. You'll just remove that, wriggle out the seat with a uh, pair of long nose pliers. Process for setting the float level. Uh, this carby is uh, the carbs inverted on a completely different angle that the uh, 42 is to um, for the setting. But uh, at the end of the day, um, all ends out with the same result and just follow the procedure. Okay, well I hope you found that uh, useful. If uh, you still have other questions or uh, couldn't find the information you needed uh, when you're having a look around the mccooneyoz.com website yourself, uh, you can always drop us an email or give us a telephone call during business hours and uh, one of our technicians will be more than happy to help you out um, and hopefully resolve the situation for you. Uh, apart from that, please do like our uh, video and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that um, as we keep bringing more of these uh, videos out, you'll uh, be notified and um, hopefully you find them interesting and as helpful as this one. Thank you.